thought I lost you there for a moment. No, well, I thought I lost me too. I'm still kind of figuring out Google Plus a little bit. Um, yes. It's just a social network that I don't spend a whole lot of time on, so it takes me a little bit longer than it should probably for me to make my way around. But anyways, um, yeah, go ahead and, and tell me again, uh, you know, what you're doing on Help Outs, what Help Outs is doing, and, and talk about some of the people that you've helped so far and, and what the results have been. Yeah, sure. So um, on Tuesday, the day they launched, I hosted... Uh, three helpouts, I think, uh, and it was with people all across North America, which I thought was really exciting. Um, and everybody had something. Everybody was looking for uh, something that was a little bit different. And you know, some people wanted help, like setting up their garden for the first time. Other people were more experienced and wanted uh, help addressing specific problems, whether it was uh, like some sort of disease or just unhealthy plants in general, or even trying to transition plants from outdoors, uh, indoors for the winter, herbs they wanted to continue growing throughout the winter. And so it was really interesting to get to experience all the information that people were seeking. And the feedback was that it's much more natural for them to have a conversation with an expert rather than search for all that information on the web. Um, because there's nothing that I told them that they couldn't have found themselves in a book or on the web, in a blog somewhere. Sure. But that takes a lot of time to search and sift through all that information. And it's a lot easier to ask somebody a pointed question and get a direct response. Right. Absolutely. So um, where are you from? What's your story? And uh, what are you doing? as a, an expert on Google Helpouts. <laughs> uh, I am from Chicago, and I am on Google Helpouts because I have a tech startup of my own. Sure. Um, every last morsel is sort of like a distributed farmer's market online. What we're trying to do is use the web to lower the barrier to entry for uh, producers of all sizes to sell mm -hmm. their products directly to the customer. Um, and we're doing that to an extent that we're trying to promote urban agriculture and backyard gardening and help those gardeners share their bumper crop with people right in their own neighborhood and potentially even create some sort of supplementary income. Uh, you can think of the corollary being Etsy. Mm -hmm. Etsy helps craft makers connect with a global audience. We're helping urban farmers connect with their community by leveraging the web. And how is Helpouts going to kind of, what what kind of uh, role does Google Plus and social networking and Helpouts play on uh, things? Yeah, well, we'll see. I was really excited to try it out just to help people grow more food. Sure. Um, I was actually inspired to build Every Last Morsel because a few years ago I started a farming service. So I would physically grow food for people in their own backyard. I figured there's landscaping services. Why not create farming services? Sure. Uh, a lot of people wanted to grow their own food, but they didn't have the time or the knowledge. So I would provide that to them. And I realized that you could really grow a tremendous amount of food in a small space. And I also realized that I wasn't the only one doing this. I met a number of people in Chicago that were individuals like me growing food for people. Urban farming is really taking off, trying to add value to abandoned spaces and cities and use it as a tool for promoting community. And so I saw this opportunity to use the web to connect these tiny plots of land to people who can make good use of their products. And what I really like about Helpouts is I think this is going to be huge in helping generate a new, helping educate a new generation of farmers. Um, over the time, over time, building every last morsel, I've realized that we can use the same technology to help larger farms connect mm -hmm. with customers, uh, even large customers like food businesses or distributors. And um, I've I've realized that there's this new generation of farmers that's picking up the plow. And they're trying to 
you know, grow food in more sustainable, diversified ways in many cases. Sure. And there's just a huge learning curve with farming in general. It takes years and years and years of practice. Um, even as a so-called expert on <laughs> help out, I mean, there's always things that I'm learning, even as a relatively small-time gardener. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you think about help outs, especially in conjunction with mobile technology, like mobile phones, or you know, even in the not so distant future, Google Glass, mm -hmm. and the ability to like bring up an expert while you're in the field, hypothetically, and look at a diseased plant and be able to know immediately what the problem is and how to treat it, I think has huge, huge potential for transforming the way that uh, information is distributed about food and agricultural process. Sure. What is what is the uh, urban culture community or the urban farming community like in Chicago? What's what's going on in Chicago right now? It's a pretty exciting place. Um, they're they're growing food in all sorts of innovative ways, and it's not just growing food in unfamiliar places. It's also using new technology to grow food in places where it wouldn't have been possible without it, like uh, the advent of hydroponics and aquaponics. Uh, recently, the largest aquaponics farm in the United States was opened in the west side of Chicago, and they're supplying whole foods, and you're going to see a lot more of those farms pop up in the future. Um, I have a friend, Veronica, who is growing food in the basement of a Montessori school using hydroponics. And the output of a system like that is really tremendous. When they're at capacity, just in a half or a quarter of the basement that they have, they'll be putting out 4,000 heads of lettuce every week. Wow. Um, so the, the potential impact of this technology is huge. And all of this... And you're going to see more and more value derived from data and agriculture moving forward. And that's really where I want every last morsel to be positioned in the long term. Sure. Um, you seem like a young guy. I'm a young guy. Uh, what, what role do young people have in urban agriculture and agriculture in general moving forward? What do you think? Um, that's a good question. And I think that young people are going to continue to innovate. Um, we grew up with technology, unlike the current generation that's farming. Uh, so I think it is natural for us to expect solutions to come from digital technologies. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, perhaps just as importantly, we have a certain responsibility to use that technology to become more educated consumers. There's always going to be more consumers than there are farmers. Mm -hmm. and making sure that the public is educated about how their food is produced and the impact that has on the environment and the community is at least as important as the people growing it taking that responsibility themselves. Sure. Cool. And when exactly is uh, Every Last Morsel? When do you plan on uh, officially doing a hard launch of that? When's it going live? Uh, I wish I could tell you. <laughs> I've been saying yeah. next month for months. <laughs> um, we have been uh, bootstrapping this for a really long time. And there always seems to be a technical piece that's missing or just out of reach. So uh, at this point, we're hoping to roll out this winter in some cities in the south um, and start testing. So it's, a, it's a multiple. I mean, it's not just Chicago, then. You're, you're going national, then. Absolutely. Really, cool. it's not a sustainable business model if it's not national. Right. Yeah. Um, so. We yeah we want to try and launch in cities like Los Angeles, Austin, Atlanta uh, this winter and get people online there growing food, sharing it with their community, uh, and we have much more ambitious plans for the future and connecting all those dots. Cool. I have got one last question for you, and then I'll let you go. Thanks. Uh, yeah no thank you. Um, what's your favorite vegetable? <laughs> uh, this is a tough one. Um, to eat, I'd have to say I just love a good sun-ripened tomato. Um, but in terms of aesthetic value, I think eggplants are just stunningly beautiful. Um, and I really love like planting them in borders of existing landscaping around the house and stuff. 
Um, so I'll give you two answers there. You may have just alienated a bunch of kale people out there. I don't know. <laughs> All right, cool. Thanks so much, Todd. And uh, Todd Jones uh, from EveryLastMorsel.com. Thanks for helping me out. My pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, have a good one. You too. Bye.